Out of Time on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I really like that Blur track. I think it's the best thing they've ever done. Blimey. So... Strong words. They can quote me on that if they want. <laughs> yes. <laughs> on their, I'm sure they'll rush to. On their, uh, you know, posters. one of their albums. Yeah. If they wanted. Okay. Well, listen. You're lucky I'm here, Steve. Okay. Right? I'm, okay, you can see, you know, you know something that's happened. I've done my back in again. Right. right? I've, I've got a special chair in here. I'm in agony. Yeah. And I'm on the strongest painkillers I can get. Right? Okay. I feel a bit... Right. Carl, I had to call Carl up today and say, look, I don't know if I can make it in, can you come and get me? He came over to my house, we got in a cab and he got me here, right? Um, while he was round my house, uh, Jane showed him, um, sort of camcorder footage of how I actually did it. Of how you hurt your back. And, uh, I, I wanted Carl to tell you, because I was actually worried that if I didn't turn up, what you'd say to me. Yes. What, what, what was I doing, Carl? Right, so, I get round to his place, right? Says right, it play on the video, right? Uh, have you ever seen a gorilla having a fight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like that. Him and his mate round at his place last night decided right. to sort of have a bit of a wrestle. Yes. Um, it went on. I mean, how much footage? Uh, honestly, it was like a scene from Women in Love. Yeah. Um, we had about five fights. We had to stop at one point because his arm was bleeding. We You'd had about out. five fights. Yeah. Well, we were wrestling. We were doing wrestling, right, in the <laughs> for, for just behind what, in the, the lounge. Couch. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were on our knees and then sort of like doing, you know, and I kept I kept winning with an arm lock. Right? Yeah. And then the last time like, he sort of th threw me and I, and, my, I went on the back and my back was done and I was, you know, it was Ian Morris. Yes. It was, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, isn't, no, isn't he a um, commissioning, editor, isn't he the commissioning of editor of comedy at Channel Four? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, the funny thing was that we we had lots and lots of wine, and we went. You surprised me. <laughs> yeah, right. And we went, come on, come on, come on. I could take film this. And um, the time we filmed, I said, "Film this," and Jeremy went, "Oh, right." And <laughs> I took my shirt off. <laughs> It's right there, and it's, you can just hear slapping. Oh, Why, God. Uh, can I just ask though, I mean it's a Friday night, you know, you yeah. have a couple of drinks, you yeah. know, some intellectual conversation. Yeah. How does it get round to, do you fancy wrestling me? Well, I'm- And I'm, having it filmed? Well I was, he was on the couch, but I kept sticking my socks in his face to annoy sure. him. Sure. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he, he hit me on the shin, and I got sharp shins, and it hurt. And I was, I was going, I'm going to smack your face, and he's yeah. done kickboxing. And it's that thing, like, you sort of joke, and they go, come on then. Yeah. <laughs> and you start, have you ever seen the thing when Jack Osborne fights that skater dude? No. On the no, Osborne. I, I was very much the Jack Osborne figure. Right, yeah, the fat bloated guy <laughs> just came out of rehab. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what it was like, Steve. Have you ever seen, like, the David Attenborough stuff? <laughs> Where, like, a tiger will be ripping a deer's head off, and you think, why doesn't the camera crew stop it? Yeah, yeah. You sort of watch, you thinking, why was James why just letting this Why is she not stepping in and intervening? <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, she said, right, you've seen enough, haven't you, and stopped it, so I don't know how much footage you got. <laughs> It wasn't much. It wasn't much. But because your lounge is not huge, and there's not much space between the the, the back of the sofa and the oh, table. It doesn't need enough. It was just a, it was just a, a pin or a submission. So it was just, <laughs> it was all over with like one of us throwing the other one on the back. Arm and locked. how does it? I mean, how do you start with a wrestling match? Are you both stood up or you're no, on, the, on your knees and you sort of like go together like ratting steels? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. Like a giant walrus. It's not gay. Play a record. Can we put that online? <laughs> Can we get that on the web? <laughs> that, that I would love to say. <laughs> <laughs> Better Roger Stewart? Yeah. Yeah. Stewart May. <laughs> Indeed. You need to say no more. Yeah. If people don't know what it is from that, yeah. that information, forget them. X. Gervais Merchant Pilk. <laughs> exactly. Alright? Exactly. Rick, I was uh, out last night, I was in the Crouch End area, and I passed yeah. out. I always, things upset me like this. It was a restaurant, it was a little French restaurant, yeah. but you barely noticed it. You walk past, it was like a row of houses, and a little French restaurant yeah. there, open, it was kind of summery. Bistro. It? No one in there, Rick. It was You're about joking. 10 to 10. I'm thinking if no one's in there on, uh, 10 to 10 on a Friday evening, it's doomed. And it really upset me. It genuinely upset me because I always think about the little French guy in there. He, you know, he, he's put all his money into that. He's convinced Rene. his wife to do it. Yeah. You know, she's not convinced, but she's a great cook. Eve. Exactly. And it's already going down the pan. Do you know why? You don't want French food in a hot summer's night. You want Mexican food. <laughs> well, indeed, some kind of tapas. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. But then I was, because we were just discussing other things that upset us, and uh, my glimpse so War. Well, true, obviously war. war. I mean, obviously I started with war, plague, famine, famine yeah, yeah, disease, yeah. SARS, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, then it came down the list to, um, worried about people who manufacture fax machines. Why? Because of technology? Well, moving they, on. I mean, if you want to, say you're making fax machines, you're a little company, you make fax machines. A little what? A little company. Oh, right. 
You're making fax machines. Are you allowed to use email? What, like, if you work for Coke, you're not allowed to drink Pepsi exactly. publicly? It just seems like I'm s- I'm assuming the, the fax machine is, sales off plummeting. Now, the thing is, right, is it? Now, I haven't got a fax machine, you're right, I've got email, but I much prefer a fax. Well, yeah, but Because you got- get it, it comes out the other- it comes out the other side. Yeah, but- you know what I mean? It but is, it is, is what print- they've sent, that's what's great about a fax. But you can print off your email, can't you, and then you've got it in hard copy. Wow, well, it's sort I of know, instant. But, you know, I don't look at the emails, a fax comes out, it's there, it goes- it's like someone putting a little post note into your face, do you know what I mean? You go, oh yeah, I'll read that. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Email, you got email. Uh, you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? well, yeah. No, I s- but what worries me is whether fax. I'm assuming fax machines are just. I mean, I don't know if there's anyone listening who works maybe for a fax machine. Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. If you're in the fax <laughs> industry, give us a call. Tell us, uh, you know, what sort of sort of <laughs> figures. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Yeah. We want to go down seventeen percent, something like that. <laughs> something like that. Those kind in, of the, in the southwest. <laughs> exactly. Those are yeah. the kind of stats. Uh, but um, you got? Have, do, have you got fax machines yet in the north, Carl? Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, you're loving it, aren't you? I like getting letters. <laughs> well, no one sends letters anymore, do they? Uh, you like getting a scroll from a man on a horse. Yeah. <laughs> saying your. When do you get letters? To me, mum still sends me the odd letter. Sure. Even though I call, she'll still she she likes sitting down at a table and. Yeah. You so know, what you call and ask the questions, there's no reply, and then you get yeah, a letter yeah, a day later going, later. question one, yes I am well. <laughs> yeah. Question two, yes your father's well. Yeah. Oh, it's nice though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. letter's nice. It, it? It's nice to receive a letter, yeah. It's always nice to receive a letter. Particularly if, like, you know, you're on a sort of expedition. <laughs> but, <isn't it>? yeah. <laughs> what does annoy me though, you, you were looking at them the other day, you know, you were talking about the pictures on them, postcards. Yes. Don't like them. You don't like, you don't like postcards? No, they annoy me. <laughs> and just just because it's never anything of any interest, and the fact that even though it's been sent to you, you're the last one to read it. I just, whenever I used to send my mum a postcard, I, I, every day, uh, every time I send it, on, I'd horrify her by putting on it, having a lovely time. Um, does that pig of a postman still read all your letters? <laughs> and she'd just be horrified, she'd be terrified nice. he'd looked at it all the time. This is what worries me, I've always assumed that people would read a postcard. If I was a postman, I would definitely read a po- every single postcard. Yeah. So if you're on holiday, See, you know, What do you mean? Yeah, you wouldn't have a lot of time left if you read every postcard. No, but after, as you're posting as you're posting it through the letterbox, you'd have a quick look, wouldn't you, to see what, was, what they were up to. Because that's why I never used to write anything of any interest on a postcard, because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want anyone to sort of know what I was up to. Let's say I was on a bawdy lad's holiday, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 I would yeah, just yeah. write sun, you know, nice sunny, you know, got myself yeah. a lovely pair of shorts. Yeah. Like that. You know, I'd keep the truth, Rick, yeah. for when I got home. Well, he's looking forward to going on holiday now, Carl, because he's got some prescription lens sunglasses. We'll t- be talking about that after the break. <laughs> Bit of darkness. <laughs> Look forward to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. An amusing story about a man wearing glasses. <laughs> oh, the darkness growing on me. It certainly is. On XFM <laughs> one hundred four point nine. Love those boys. Keep the guitar riffs up, lads. <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Oh, it's good to see that your back pain has not impaired your DJing abilities. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, I'm a professional. I'm yeah, a professional. You've sold it all. Yeah. Put the glasses on for Carl. Well, see, now, because I wear glasses normally, I, um. I've always had problems with glasses. The, the thing about glasses is it stops you from doing so many things, and you point, may not realise if you're a non-glasses wearer, certain things that you can never do. If you're, like, for instance, I have never been able to Volleyball. go into the mosh pit at a gig <laughs> and, get, and get carried above everyone. You know, <laughs> they, they carry you above everyone on their hands. Because I, so I knew someone would just but grab my glasses. you don't need to, you can see from the back. That's the good thing about you at a no, concert, indeed, you can actually stand at the back the and look over. being able to at least jump on the stage and do a stage dive and all the rest of it. So that's one of the things I've missed out on. Missed out on, you know, sport really, because lots of- like, boxing for instance I could never do. I could never do boxing, never do wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so our big championship showdown is not gonna yeah. happen. Um, <laughs> We'd probably be the same weight category. Well, possibly. <laughs> in your reach. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, I remember when I first got glasses, I- I only had to wear them occasionally. I was, I think I was, uh, it meant I couldn't see things a long way away. <laughs> and obviously I got them, but I was at school and I was a bit self-conscious, didn't want to really tell anyone I had glasses. I just, oh. I didn't reveal to anyone I was wearing them. So, I used to go into a class, I remember being in science, and we always sat in the same spot, and it, I was sat right at the back, and I couldn't see what was on the blackboard. But I didn't want to start. I didn't want to put my glasses on because I didn't want people to know I had glasses. So I, so I couldn't see what was being written on the board. And you have to copy stuff down from the board, science equations, things like that. I had no idea. So I'd have to try and copy off someone next to me, but not that wasn't always possible because I had to do it surreptitiously. So what I took to doing was pe- sharpening my pencil every sort of 
35 seconds going up, to the going up memorizing what was on the board <laughs> and i got a d in and science oh that's so awful that's sort of, though it's a big it's a tough thing glasses so it really it is it when was, you first start wearing if you're see, young it was education versus vanity yeah it's terrible isn't it and now he's think he thinks well hold on he's sorted out his hair you can see he's quite stylish a, stylish hair because when i met him it was like i mean words were gummage yeah. It, it won't mind me saying that. Yeah. His glasses were, I mean, idiotic when I met him, and he's got some stylish glasses now, so he sorted that out. Yeah. Um, his, his clothes, he's quite a fashionable bloke, and when I first met him, uh, it looked <laughs> like a... A nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, it's step by step, and w with these on, I think you'll agree, pop them on, Steve. Well, you know, I and don't... Imagine him in the, on the beach. Close right? your eyes, Carl. Are they closed? I can't see, yeah. I've taken my glasses off. Oh. Yeah. So that's a weird thing as well, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> What are you laughing at? Look, what are you laughing at, Carl? There's nothing funny about those. Stop smirking. <laughs> I can see through Don't forget, you can see they're not real sunglasses, they're prescription lenses, so we can see you yeah, now. You see, I, I never knew you had to do that with, with sunglasses. I didn't think you had to have that. Right, yeah, when it's bright outside, people who wear glasses don't need to wear them. So they, they're, they're, they're looking cool, but they're bumping into yeah. stuff. No, but if your eyes aren't that good, then the sun shouldn't be bothering them. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> No, I always wondered about Roy Orbison. Why was he doing that? <laughs> what? Roy Orbison always had shades on, didn't he? And he was blind and stuff. It's like, what? Well, what's the point of that? Well, because I, I don't, I don't. I mean, I don't. I'm guessing. Well, I don't even want to. I don't what know. What are you talking about? It's Roy Orbison was blind, wasn't he? Yeah. Was he? I thought he just had very, very bad vision. No, I think he was a blind fellow. Wasn't I don't he? think he was blind. Was he not? No, I think he yeah, had very poor like, vision. Wear him, you know. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what this conversation is anymore. No, well, once again, we've introduced Carl into the equation <laughs> and he's just gone off on a completely bizarre tangent. <laughs> when I went, he went, oh, I'm gonna pick up my prescription lenses, and he went, we had to wait, and, uh, the bloke came, he said, uh, who's it for, um, uh, me, he said, oh yeah, Mr. Merchant, here they are, and as he was getting out, <laughs> to try and embarrass Steve, I went to him, they are the exact ones that Keanu, uh, Reeves <laughs> uses in The Matrix, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and he went, he went, uh, what? I went, no, I'm joking, no, I'm joking. But, uh, yeah. I'll tell you what frustrates me, can I just say, as a glasses wearer, and this is just a, a note to everyone out there, who isn't a glasses wearer, when people ask constantly to try on your glasses, can I try on your glasses? And they try them on, and they always do the same thing, oh, I can't see a thing! What were you expecting? X-ray vision? No. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't ask. It, but if I you're a glasses wearer, you don't want people asking to try on your glasses. But I think they don't realise that- What by, are you expecting? By going, oh god, your eyesight's bad. Yeah. It's not like going, it, it, you know what I mean? It's not like saying, let's have a go with your calipers. Right, well, and popping you know, them on and going, God, bloody hell, you can't walk very well. But it's well. a form it's of not disability, like, isn't it? Well, yeah, but it's, it's a, it's one that doesn't impair that much. It's an inconvenience that you maybe have to put glasses on all the time. Did I mention the mosh pit thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not, yeah, but you're, you're not, you're not, um, uh, what's your, what's your vision? It's just blurred, is it? No, I can't see anything. I mean, it's really bad. It's is it really? really? bad, yeah. If I take my glasses off, you are just a blur. I see now, I can see nothing. It's just, just a couple of bold heads. <laughs> And I know only one of you's bold, so <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at Carl twice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Carl, they, it's your vision 2020. Well, there you go. That's uh, Steve's eyes on XFM next week. Ricky's knees. <laughs> Bit of vinyl? Yeah, now listen, I want to mention this. This is from this new, uh, Morrissey compilation. It's a new series, I'm assuming a number of different rock stars are gonna do it. It's called Under the Influence, and various, uh, rock stars get to choose, yeah. obviously, songs which they grew up listening to and that have influenced yeah. them. And this is from Morrissey, he's the first person to do it. And there's some stuff on there which is, uh, a bit odd and a bit oddborn. There's some stuff which is good, and there's a Ramones on there, and Nico, and Patti Smith, but this is one of them. He obviously, famously, Morrissey was a member, he was, I think he was the president of the New York Dolls fan club in England. And this is from there, and this is trash. The New York Dolls trash from this new, uh, compilation, Under the Influence, uh, compiled by Morrissey. Are they the original punk band? Oh, oh, eight, seven, hundred, eight, hundred, one, two, three, four. Well, we want your calls. Knows they no, are, we don't. So we don't want your calls. Everyone Fact, knows Don't are. call in. Don't call in. Please. We're not D interested. Not, no point. <laughs> Rick, um, it's half past one. Yeah. Adverts? Yeah. Yeah. Coldplay and the scientists on XFM 104.9, Richard May, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. We saw an interesting sight on the way here, didn't we, Steve? Yeah. We, we, came, we came in, um, yesterday to, uh... Well, to plan the show. <laughs> to plan the show, sure. yeah. Uh, we actually annoyed Carl for half hour and yeah. left. Yeah. Um, but a bloke with a completely tattooed face. Mm. I actually don't know what stage you are in, at, you know, what stage you're at in your life when tattooing your own face is a good but idea. But this, this wasn't sort of like, 
you know, tribal or religious, and it was a, as a, a bloke, j just had a sort of tattoo on his forehead and around his eyes, professionally done. It looked quite old, so I don't know if, I don't know if tattoos do that now. I, I think they've probably got to watch themselves, but I was just well, thinking- Well, there's not rules about what you can tattoo. I'm assuming if you're a tattooist, you can do what you want, you can tattoo anything. I wouldn't have thought, there's probably some comeback, isn't there? I mean, I certainly, you know, I think they've got to be sober, I think you've got to be a, a, over- Twenty, well, I don't know, right. over something, and I wouldn't have thought many tattooists would tattoo someone's face, would they? Well, I don't know. Have you met I'd tattooists? Someone I don't want to slag them off, but they 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 are like you know. I know why they're big. Well, exactly, and they've a got needles. Are, a lot of them are big, um, but they do but seem like they live in I, the periphery of society. A lot of these. But people. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I just wouldn't tattoo someone's face. Do you know what I mean? I, no. I, I've been no, I mean, you'd wrestle a man to the ground <laughs> and then hurt your back. But no, you wouldn't tattoo someone. <laughs> no, I know. Does everyone ever regret it? I mean, do, do, I mean. I'm sure some people regret a tattoo. Whenever someone shows me a tattoo, I go, that's brilliant. Cos I can't bear to go, that's rubbish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just think that, cos they, they can't change it, there's no point. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? I go, it's brilliant. Well, was, I read in the paper, was it a man or a woman who had, um, David Beckham, they just had Beckham <laughs> on, their, on their arm. Just, uh, d not a picture of him, but the word Beckham <laughs> tattooed on their arm. Spelt wrong. Oh, They'd God. missed out the K. Or, like, or maybe they missed out the C, so it was B-E-K-A-M. Oh, no. Anyway, it was just spelt wrong. I mean, oh, I mean, God. firstly, why do you just have the name of David Beckham on your arm? I, I, it's, home tattoos are the best, though. What's well, doing like it yourself? That's done with a pin and a mm. sort of mm. some ink in prison, uh, uh, you know, like with skins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. sort of wonky because they've done it in a mirror. Yeah. What does that say? We'll read it. To knock. Yeah, yeah. I did it in a mirror. Profanity. Yeah. Have you, um, would you ever toy with a tattoo, Carl? No, I mean, I've told you about me, me Uncle Stan before, haven't I? The what, ta Uncle Stan? Tattoo, tattoo Stan. No. He's just covered in them, it just looks a mess. Do you know what I mean? You can be wearing the best suit in the world, but you still look a scruff. Sure, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Once yeah. you have it done, well, well no, some can tattoos, do. you know, can be quite tasteful. No, 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 but, but he was but covered. It was yeah. all like, you know, cut here on his neck <laughs> and <laughs> really? you know I mean? like, It's just, uh, yeah, a mess. And he, he did a lot of his own. I've told you about him before. Have you? I don't remember it. Yeah, because I was saying, if you're gonna do your own, at least make sure you're a good drawer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a mess. It was just sort of <laughs> <all over laughs> what, he did, what he thought yeah. he'd done. He just sort of doodled all snakes around. Yeah, and all his kids' names on his arms, and it's like, can't you remember them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he might have had a lot. No, he did. Yeah. But and do you remember even from a young age thinking that looks rubbish? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it'll, be, it'll probably be about sixty now. I'd love to see what he looks like yeah. now. Well, lot, just look lot, at this. There was another. There was a story the other day in uh, one of the magazines that I read um, about this this fella who had a. Uh, well, this would be bizarre or fourteen times then. Yeah, one well, of the magazines you read. Yeah, yeah. so well, it's going to be. <laughs> It's not the spectator. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, this fella had a big eagle put on his back. Yeah. With a snake sort of covering it. <laughs> and, um. So, such rubbish, isn't it? This, this kind of these symbols of sort of <laughs> dynamism of the and life. Yeah. I, I mean, know, yeah. A snake and an eagle. Yeah. A, a large breasted vampire woman yeah. riding a dragon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that, that's always a good one. But, shit, but, but, you know, this fella had that and, and he had it in his will. That when he dies, he wanted his son to have the skin taken off. Oh God! And put in a um, put in like a little frame. Oh, oh God! That's ho that's horrific. What's that? That's my dad's back. Yeah. Oh, are you sure? God. No, no. Because I was I read it and kind of thought started having sort of memories of Aunt Inora again. Yeah. Because she used to always like, uh... Now, Auntie Nora is the woman who... who farted for five she, minutes. She had wind for five minutes. Sure. Yeah. But she also, uh, she used to say, oh, Carl, rub me back. <laughs> right. And, uh, with her being quite old, it was all sort of moly and warty. It was right. mouldy? No, it was sort of mold moldy. Mo moldy. Right. And what did you do? I didn't like it. I hated it, in fact. It was like reading a braille book. Yeah. It was like putting your hand in a, in a load of Cocoa Pops. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> All really big <laughs> brown things. And yeah. I just thought uh, frame, framing uh, hers would be sort of 3D ish. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. we're, What's we're, that, a chunk of the moon? No. Yeah, yeah. Did you R text that wall? Yeah. No, that's Nora. <laughs> that's Auntie Nora's that's back. <laughs> oh, God. Any piece of your body can't you oh, leave behind? That's posterity? disgusting. Putting your hand in some. Is she the one with the split tennis ball when she yeah. wasn't wearing knickers? Shut up. That's what? The one. No, let's not discuss the tennis ball. Okay. 
So she used to get you to, to sort of knead her dough on her back. <laughs> oh, God, this but, is really bad. But like, what, was she with, with her with her dress or whatever? Or well, she wore those sort of squid-looking things. Like, oh, well, sorry, well, sorry. What, 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 what? <laughs> those squid-looking? Hey, Zani, no, I covered in octopuses. What are you talking about? What do you no, mean? It's like a uh, it's like a nightgown type thing. But, but what's squid got to do with it? Because it sort of looked like a squid around the around the edge. Oh, I know, frilly things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she just said, "Oh, just oh, I'm aching there." Oh. She, she was never well. She was never. Do you know what I mean? She's always had something wrong with her. I don't. I don't ask her. She, <laughs> it's it's just like you know, she's not going to be all right. Did yeah. she have wind when you were sort of neat? It must be like playing an accordion. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, get a little tune going. <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, who's the, who's your auntie with the tattoos? That's uh, that's Hazel. Oh, right, let's, yeah. Let's leave that. Why? Well, let's. let's Why? Not talk about Why leave? What have I? What have I? What have I come across there? What's, What's up with Hazel? What's up with Annie Hazel? There's nothing wrong with her. It's just a, uh, what? Just a, a lesbian, which is nothing wrong with that. Well, no, but you've made it sound like there is now, yeah. but I'm not wanting to say it. My no, aunt is I a know, lesbian. I know what you're saying now, I know what you're getting at, just because I call her Uncle Hazel. <laughs> Play a record. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Manchester, Pe please, please <laughs> forgive him. <laughs> Lizzie, don't believe a word, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Jamez with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Email here from Chris, he said you met a girl in Australia whose boyfriend tattooed her arm with the word psycho, except the spelling was wrong, and she ended up scarred for life with the word fizzco. Fizzco. <laughs> fizzco. <laughs> P-H-Y-S-C-O. Oh, I mean, a word of warning, if you're going out today to get a tattoo, they're tattooists. Right. English is probably not their speciality. <laughs> So be careful. Write it down for the first. You are first, walking on thin ice. So oh. I, I've seen some of these boys. They're big. Sure. They're big. No, and if they're willing to stick lumps of metal through their faces, True. what are they going to do to you? Well, yeah, indeed. So, yeah. Steve, sorry. To all the tattoos. piercing. You see, I have a weird problem with the piercing as well. Because I mean, the earrings that makes sense. I had earrings ages ago, but did yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, but yeah. you're a man who about eighteen. Hates pain, and he's scared of, it hurt. of everything. It hurt. I was about eighteen, and I, I took two in one, and, and they did it right, and he just went. And I went, mm -mm. all right. I went, yeah. <laughs> I just, went, oh god. Yeah. Did you have them in both earrings? It's just, it just, yeah. it was like a staple gun. I just went, do, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, and it didn't really hurt. And I thought, well, I'm not doing that again. It hurts too much, and it just throbbed. Were you still living with your with your parents at the time? No, I mean, what did no, people? Moved, what, no, your, no, your your kind of oiky reading family. What would they have made of? Oh, well, they they know I had them afterwards. Yeah, and they, but did they take yeah. the mic? Oh God, of course they did. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Rick, yeah. you ain't going to eat like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you'll get followed. Oh, look at you. Look at that. Yeah, that's disgusting. And when I was no, when I was new romantic, my mum said, "Bloody hell! I thought I only had one girl." <laughs> 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 um, which is the earring? Because isn't it like one ear is for gay people and one is for straight people? Is, is that just a myth? Or I don't that, know. It might it was it, something yeah. to do with which well, ear you had. The, it in. Yeah, there probably was sort of like signs for that. Yeah, I, I, it's like when you're growing up. I heard loads like um, if, right, a white polo neck, right, and a and a, a ring on your little finger, that means you're gay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you can see him coming. Yeah, exactly, yeah. He's just consulting your little chart. <laughs> exactly. Hold oh, on. Oh, no, neck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are the yeah. earrings in the left ear. I, I got it. <laughs> I don't know where I am. Because wasn't there that thing that, um, that the famous cover of Born Bruce to Springsteen. Run? Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Where you know the handkerchief, yeah. It was, it was a handkerchief in the, in the right hand pocket. Dom and, and was, yeah. I don't know. But, you know, when, it, where is this information? I wouldn't have known that. I might have gone around, you know, with, uh, you know, if it was hot weather, yeah. you know, something to mop my brow, I wouldn't have known that. Like, what, can't the gay people kind of notify us? Can't we have some kind of website or something? Well, we can the, check do you still out? go to that pub with all those sort of like butch blokes? Lovely with, um, guys. With the uh, moustaches and, yeah. yeah. the cats, great guys. A lot of them are firemen, a lot of them are like traffic cops. <laughs> great people. You know what I mean? Fascinating you know, people. You know you're safe in there. Yeah, it also yeah, has well. no women to, it's like you're just having a great time with the lads and there's nothing, it's Just playing pool strip to your waist. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I can talk. Oh, yeah. my back's still hurts. <laughs> okay, yeah, a little bit of hip hop. It's nice to have, uh, occasional hip hop tunes just keep it. You know, it's, it's some, yeah, uh, yeah, you'll be yeah, cruising yeah, around yeah, in your yeah. open top shed. Now, Steve, I see there it's a track by Little Kim, but how are you pronouncing it? I'm pronouncing that correctly Lil Kim. Oh, no T's involved. And it's the jump off featuring Mr. Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I find that funny. But Mr. Cheeks is involved. <laughs> if you can spot him, good luck. Uh, I believe that's Mr. Cheeks there. <laughs> just, uh, just busted it on the mic. And that's called the jump off. Talking of Cheeks, Carl, have we got another instalment of Cheeky Freak of the Week this week? Yeah. Have we? <laughs> Excellent. Look forward yeah. to that. Is there some monkey news? Goes without saying. Of course. Without really, with that monkey news is safe, isn't it? It's not like, uh, you're always going home with monkey news. You know it's there. Yeah. It's like um, songs of praise on a Sunday. I uh, when I came back I've been on holiday for a week and uh, I sort of sat in by the pool and stuff and I sort of wrote 
about 40 minutes stand up with a new, new, my new yeah. show and I was going to the car and I said, it's great when you get away, it's sort of like, you're relaxing, you just, you just think clearly, he went, I know, I know, I know. He said, I was away when I came up with Rockbusters. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. I was buzzing about writing 40 minutes of brand new stand up. Yeah. He equated that to coming up with Rockbusters. Should I be insulted, Steve, or is Rockbusters as good as everyone's saying it is? <laughs> <laughs> is um, it is it the one good idea? Is it like E M C E equals M C squared? Was to Einstein is to you know rockbusters is to Carl. What if I do this, Rick? What if we if I played you some adverts right now? Yeah, and then we, we talk came about back it. with some rockbusters. Yeah, you could you could make the judgment oh, yourself. Maybe I'll do rockbusters and show people how easy it is to do it wrong. <laughs> Adverts, then rock busters. And a cup of lovely coffee. Cup of coffee in the pot. Yeah, coffee cup. I want a cup of coffee. <laughs> Placebo. This picture, XFM. What's Carl doing? What's he rooting I around? I don't know, at? but listen, while he's doing that, can I just say, uh, happy birthday from all of oh, us to, uh, oh, yeah. to Shan. Her friend Terry said, uh, play some placebo for uh, Shan, so happy birthday well, to that's her. Done. That's, that's done. That's done. done. Cross that off the list. Yeah, that's another thing we've got through Ding. today. Rock busters, please. Do you want to, um... Look at the prizes. I'll have a look at the prizes, see what people, uh, can win. It's an email only competition, please remember that. Alright, we've got the, uh, Later with Jules Holland, uh, Louder DVD. There's stuff on there from the Cardigans, Rollins is on there, Mercury Rev, Sonic Youth, The Datsuns, Queens of the Stone oh, Age. Oh, no, wait a minute, they're all great bands, but I think they need a boogie woogie piano at the top of everything <laughs> they do. Well, it's hopefully Jules Holland would have, uh, Okay, helped. good, good, yeah. good, good, cos that, there was something missing there on most of those tunes. Yeah, current album from Goldfrapp, that's there as well. What have we got this on DVD, The Life of Mammals, the complete series. Of that, a couple of uh, we've got the Inspiral Carpets again, a three CD set of the best of the Inspiral Carpets. I don't know how they strung it over three CDs. <laughs> um, the best one hit wonders in the world ever. And um, let me see. Oh dear, uh, a three yeah. CD set, a three CD the set. best of Inspiral. I'm Inspiral struggling. Carpets. I'm struggling. I'm assuming CD three is just the Corals album. <laughs> Anyway, there's some, some good <laughs> things there. You've sourced, oh sourced some dear. good stuff this week. Alright. Well, uh. Alright. Yeah. Here's, here's your right, Here's your rock busters, yeah. Right. right. Uh, cryptic clove, a well. couple of initials, and, uh. And you sort that out. Right. <laughs> uh, first what one. What was Dr. Fox on about that we don't. We okay. don't sound like proper presenters. It's, I don't, strange, I, isn't it? uh, it's mad. Go on, Carl. Right, the first one. Uh, a customer wanted some paint to darken up a room. Shop assistant knew what to do. Right? Customer wanted some paint to darken up a room. The shop assistant knew what to do. The initials there, C B. Right? C B. C B for the oh, first right. one there. Right. Uh second one, it'd be alright if uh if their heads weren't that big. Right? And again? It would be alright if their heads weren't that big. And that's uh S F. S F. Yeah. And the last one <laughs> I know that. I know right. that one. Yeah, go on. And the last one, uh Chanel, I've got another perfume out. N O, right? Chanel, I've got another perfume out. N O. You email in Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot That's that done. And those prizes can be yours. Yeah. More music, please. Bit of uh, Bob Marley. Are any of these going to annoy me? Oh, I've got to stir it up. Yeah. Brilliant. Are any of these clues going to annoy me this week? No, they're all good. Are they really? Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. yeah we'll be the judge of that. All right. Ricky Dr. dot co dot uk. Stir it up. Bob Marley on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Wait, did you get up today and just see the great weather and think, do you know what, I'd love to hear some stir it up from Bob Marley. Yeah, yeah, yeah? I did actually. Well, I was gonna play it last, uh, the week before last, before I went away, and we didn't, we didn't have time. So, uh... Well, we were crammed full of features, like this one. Have we got a cheeky freak of the week? Do you want one? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let, I think we should have a jingle for this. Okay, I've got, I've, uh, yeah, I've got a jingle. It's very similar to chimpanzee. Ch chimpanzee that. Yeah. Well, let's hear it, let's hear it. Okay. Oh, cheeky freak of the week. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, no, I think that's excellent. So, cheeky okay. freak of the week. You've spotted a this freak This is this where, week? this is where somewhat, I think, offensively, you pick on someone who's, who's not like other people and say it's your favourite freak of that week. Yeah, I remember well, we had the woman whose uh, legs look like the hind legs of a dog. Um, we've had the little fella with the ageing disease with the little head playing the piano. That's, that was your favourite. I think that's your probably freak of the year, isn't it? It's a so, pretty good one. So wh what, what, what's, what's this? Is it a man um, with a, a horrendous injury or is it a congenital um, birth defect or what? Yeah, but you put it like that and now it sounds like I'm being tight. Sounds like I'm being out of order. But I'm just giving him a mention. <laughs> Just giving him a big shout out. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
There's uh, quite a lot going on in the freak world. <laughs> um, <laughs> there always is. You've, what, you've been visiting hospitals the last week, have you, when we were away? No, there was a... Uh, there's a thing on the on a website. This isn't even the one that I've picked, so So this is just a bonus. This is a bonus freak. Please, yeah. Yeah, go on then. Uh, uh, this is a free freak. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um it's a it's a, uh, fella, it's a fella called the Lobster Man. The Lobster Man, of course. <laughs> Again, good name, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. Right? <laughs> what are you gonna get? He's some got... some succulent <laughs> meat I like the idea with... that, I like the idea that the vicar on the christening suggested that. <laughs> I know you want to call him Mark. Can I make a suggestion? <laughs> yeah. Look at his What's his name? Uh, Mark Michael uh, Webster. Right. Um, right. Uh, yeah, have, have you thought about a nickname? Not really, no. Have you- no, have you his hands? Yeah, it, we, we don't want to talk about that because- Do it's, you know they look a little bit like lobsters? Well, yeah, but it's quite deformed. It's a, like, you know, we can- Can I suggest lobster man? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible, Vicar. <laughs> that is terrible, Vicar. We're- Pidgey. <laughs> Go on then. Yeah. We're gonna, gonna see. This is what the sort of feature you come up with, Carl. So lobster man. There's probably people listening now with you know lobster feet, right. lobster hands. So um, squid boy. <laughs> so lobster man. What does uh, what does lobster man do? Does he uh, fight crime? Not that much. Okay. Apparently he got into a bit of trouble. He was in a restaurant, and uh, this was years ago, by the way. And someone picked him to eat him. No. So <laughs> the, apparently the waiter uh, said, "Oh, you shouldn't be sat here. You should be in my, my pan." Something. Oh dear. And it, uh, they had a fight. Got out of hand. Yeah. Got out, got out of claw. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so that, that was- What do you mean they had a fight? What did, what, what, I mean, what did a, he do? A waiter took the mickey out of someone yeah. with- No. No, no. Can I just make clear, I'm assuming it's his hands look a bit like those of a lobster. Yeah. Yeah, well they're it's fused, so it's just like two big fingers. They're right. fused, I assume, probably in the womb, and they're just like, instead of like having yeah, five yeah, digits, yeah. they're fused and it- But it, I mean, he can pick stuff up, can't he? Yeah. What does he pick up? He mainly eats crabs and jellyfish, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was having a fight with the waiter, he, he snipped off his nose. <laughs> right, so anyway, he just, he just held on to the waiter's bib. Yeah. And the exactly, waiter was yeah. screaming, go and get him off me. Yeah. So yeah. anyway. Does he eat other lobsters? Does he, <laughs> does he think he would eat lobster? Right, or is it kind of. <laughs> do, uh, would he feel bad about eating lobster? Right. The, the little cheek of the freak that we've gone for, anyway. <laughs> the what? The little uh, freak of the week. Yeah. Cheeky freak of the week. Mm. We've gone for, um,. This Siamese lad. Okay. Right. Happened back in. Uh, you can't have a Siamese lad, can you? All right. Yeah. This Siamese twins. Uh, happened back in 1693. Oh, he's got a date. Blimey, that's the first time ever. Yeah. Um, and all it was, he was he was doing all right for himself. He, he used to go on the like those circus things he used to do. They're two people you're talking about, Carl. So we're going to him. All right then. All right. They. They. They did this circus show, right? Yeah. And, uh, everything's going well. They, they, you know, they, they're selling out the tents and stuff, people coming to see them. Yeah. Um, he was doing all right for himself. Yeah. Right? Did, um, sorry, before I said that, did you think a Siamese twin was a man with two heads? Well, it can be, can't it? It depends. There, there is, there's, there's, there's two people, they're conjoined. No, 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 but it depends, doesn't it? The one that I showed you in that book that time was a fellow with two heads. No, it wasn't. That was, that was a, a, a was a, f uh, a stupid picture in one of your stupid books that he had a growth that looked a little bit like it had a face on it. It wasn't a man with two heads. You're the same sort of people who send g potato chips to Esther Ranson and say, doesn't it look like Norman Cook? Yeah. It's not two heads. <sighs> we'll bend this feature. No! <laughs> No, it's, it's just- It's- they're uh, two people. They're two people. Conjoined twins. Yeah. Right, so these- It's just out of- they just happen to have a similar taste in clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so there's- yeah, they were doing alright and it all went wrong when he crossed the road, got run over. The lad with two heads got run over. That's it. <laughs> what?! How is that- how is that Cheeky Freak of the Week? Just beca- just because it got my interest and I kind of thought, why didn't he just look both ways? <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued to know- Why you... wasn't he looking both ways? <laughs> I'm intrigued oh. to know how you, uh, how you get run over and what was it, 1629? Yeah. Well, it's horses and that, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, why wasn't he looking both ways? <laughs> Carl, Carl Pilkington, you are a genius. Play a record, you fool. Well done, Carl. More Cheeky Freak of the Week next week. So what's going on? Okay, <laughs> in the freak world. <laughs> 
Universally speaking, Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. So, uh, got a lot of rockbusters coming in. Yeah, all right, actually. People yeah. obviously seem at long last to have tuned into your wavelength, Carl. Mm. Which is, of course, 104.9. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, should we give the clues again, briefly? Uh, we just haven't even actually, actually, to be honest with you, let's not, because we've already had a load of answers. I know, so, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. if you didn't get it first time round, you don't deserve to win. We had an email saying, because I've got a bad back, um, am I squeezing Carl's head? Well, I've already had a little squeeze, didn't I, about half hour ago, didn't I? Yeah. You've just, you just got to be careful, because I, I, don't, I don't want any strain, so I'd say t keep still, whatever happens, and he's, you're right about there. Yeah. Could I have a squeeze, you know, just to, while you're not really kind of capable? He's allowed to squeeze it, isn't he? Cause I've, never, I've never squeezed it once. I've never Remember, done sideways, it. temples go quite hard, but not too hard. Yeah. Front to back, go as hard as you like, because that's All right, well, I'll just have a try now. Go have no, a go. No, 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 you've got a bucket. He's sorted it out. He says every Saturday between yeah, one and two. Yeah, but I'm taking over from him because Yeah, no, let him, let him have one squeeze. Let him, <laughs> let him, let him have, have one go, squeeze. Have a go, have a go, then. So, at the, the, the front no. and the back. Yeah, yeah no, go, 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 get, get round, get round so you've got, that's it, right, now, use your, use the thing like that. Not too hard at the front? No, really hard at the front and back. There you go, yeah. You got the hang of it. Oh right. god, it's good fun. I, I see know. how you like it. Man, I like it. We're just going to do a It's great fun. Yeah. It's great. And the, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, grip there with the, the short hair, but obviously yeah. not too much. There's not much up there up top. Good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be doing that again next week. Do you know, I've got a form, right? Do you know how I'm staff here? Right? I'm, I'm like on the staff. I'm, yeah. I'm one of the staff. Got some internal mail the other day. That you have to fill out about if you die at work, who gets your money? He says, uh, "Do you put yourself at any danger?" <laughs> 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 uh, what, did, what did you say? Well, I asked Suzanne. I said, "Does that, you know, head squeezing? Is that?" Oh, well, but my leg lock round your ribs that time, and I, I had to. It was like uh, like a little alligator, like a python and an alligator, didn't I? You get quite some, you know, you get a little bit of oh, leverage. You can crush a man's ribs with you, yeah. with mighty legs. Oh, something I want to ask you, Carl. I, there's that program on now. I forget what it's called. Is it something like Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Does that? Oh, is, I, did, you, uh, I did the um, non-broadcast pilot for that because right, my yeah. mate was the uh, well, you know, um, the Phil Belker was yeah, choosing sure. it, and I did it. You know, and the premise just, of it is that it's it's one of those things about you know a conversation piece, the ultimate dinner party. I think you can yeah, have six, six invite people, six guests, um, dead, alive, or fictional, or fictional, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, you, you choose where you want it, and. Uh, yeah. And anyway, I was just intrigued to know what Carl's, um, ultimate dinner party, who, who would, who would pop round? Any of your cheeky freaks? So what's this? I, I'm putting on a- You're putting on a, uh, an imaginary dinner party. Anne Robinson's there, she's gotta be there. I said I didn't invite you, she said, well I'm there anyway. Yeah. So it was actually me, Anne Robinson, and six people. Yeah. And, and I they... chose people like heroes, like Muhammad Ali, Homer Simpson, or stuff like that, you know, James Randi, yeah. So, you could choose anyone. Living or dead, say fictional or otherwise. Would it would it would it look like a circus from the the eighteenth century? I'd have I'd have a f I'll have like a few freaks in there. Like what? Who would you have? Well, the first person I'd have is probably uh, probably have Elvis. I had Elvis. I chose Elvis. Why would you have Elvis? It's just good, wasn't he? It was good at what he did. Right. Just have a but once you'd said that to him, what what would the rest of the conversation? I'd say sing us a song. Right, so you make him sing a song. Yeah, okay. he'd, he'd be the, like the entertainment for the night yeah. when he's not on the stage performing. I probably have the elephant man there. Right. right. Well, so John Merrick, yeah. Yeah, John Merrick. Okay, I've got there, uh, Elvis, John Merrick. If anyone's out there and you know, uh, you have anything to do, can you write down everything Carl says from now to a year and send it to me and Steve because you might want to put it in a book. Yes. Is that is that would that be good? Just maybe someone keep a journal of everything That's Carl right. does and says. I'm yeah. try and keep a scrapbook of pictures. T tell you who I would have. Who? Peter Kay. Right. He'd be good. He'd be brilliant. I don't. I might be sat next to him because he's. Well, you, I mean, you're friends with yeah, Ricky Gervais, why would you wanna... No, but, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Peter, Peter K. All right, Peter K. Enough. Which yeah. one, which one, uh, would you do him as himself or one of his characters he does? Just as he is. Yeah. He's, a, he's funny, he's a funny man. Yeah. Love him. Um, what else? Probably, uh, that, that fella who, who lost his arm when he was climbing that mountain. Remember? He had to cut few, off his own oh, arm. Right. Yeah. Why, why would you have him? I'd just, I'd just like to have a chat with him and say, you know, what, what happened there then? Yeah. Well, we know what happened there, he cut his arm off. off. What no, would you no. say? Did it hurt? Yes, it hurt. But I don't think it would hurt, that's one of the questions. What are you talking about? I reckon the shock cancelled any pain out. If you're stuck there with a boulder on your arm, you've probably got bad pins and needles, right? <laughs> yeah. With a big rock on your arm. 
Mm. And you'd say, right, so how long were you sat there before you said, well, I've got to cut this off? Um, did you read about it? It was amazing. What do you think the other people would be doing when you were talking about this bloke about cutting his own arm? John Merrick wouldn't mind. He, 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 Alvi yeah. Alvis would probably be off his head on summer. Elephant Man will be having a couple of bombs. I hope Peter Kay didn't make a, a funny comment. I hope he doesn't make a funny comment. <laughs> yeah. Right? Can I just, um, can I just, a quick warning? I'll just put bloke with, bloke with one arm, bloke with- Be careful, Carl, what you serve for dinner. Yeah. Cause he's only got the one arm. Yeah. So, you know, certain things. I mean, maybe suggest, um, something you can eat with chopsticks. Or a hamburger. A hamburger. But don't go with something like lobster. Trick, you need both hands for that. And there's him and John Merrick teamed up. I think they've got one good arm each. Yeah. Well, Soup, maybe. Uh What would you give John Merrick? Buns? Couple of, yeah, couple of buns. Mm -hmm. Um have, uh, that woman, that woman in the boat who went round the world. Why? Just to see, you know, what, what, how she managed that. Pretty boring that, guests, it? really. Hey, But boring? What do you mean boring? What was she gonna say? What she say was she was going, well, I didn't see a lot. I was in a cabin, really. There's a lot of water. A lot of water. I was a bit scared. The main thing I'd want to ask her, right, because I remember when she did it <laughs> and, uh, there was an interview with her <laughs> and her parents were there or something. And, uh, her man was saying how she's dead proud because, uh, she, she decided to, you know, go around the world in a boat as a kid, instead of just hanging around on street corners mm. and stuff. Um, she said, uh, didn't, she didn't want her daughter to, like, be messing about on the streets that night on her own and stuff. She yeah, was a yeah. responsible mother. Yeah. And she sent her off on a boat. Sure. In the middle of the Atlantic. On, on her own. Yeah. So I'd like to ask her about I her. think even Manchester's safer than that, innit? Yeah. And I'd have, uh, probably another woman, so, to chat to her, probably go for, uh, <laughs> Kim, Kim Marsh. <laughs> Kim Marsh? So, sorry, sorry, you'd have the woman who sailed around the world, right, but you'd have to have another woman for her to have someone to talk to. Well, why invite either of them then? If you don't want to talk to either of them yourself. What, what, sorry, I love the this. Round the world yachtswoman, round world yachtswoman, and Kim Marsh. But why, of all the women you could invite, <laughs> I Kim love Marsh that. is at the top no, of the No, that's list. the best list I've ever heard. <laughs> Alvis John Merrick, Peter Kay, a bloke with one arm, the round the world yachtswoman chatting to Kim Marsh. <laughs> that is genius. Why haven't they invited you on this show? I'm gonna call Anne Robinson. Right, okay. If anyone's listening to that, have Carl Pilkington. I know no one knows who he is yet, but what a great bit of conversation. Play a record, Carl, you're an idiot. Some smack. Oh, always a treat. Yeah, we played uh, some, something from Morris's selection. Something that would be on my ultimate compilation is something from the Smiths. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and it'll probably be this one. I started something I couldn't finish up. I think that's one of their underrated albums, Rich. Strange Ways, Here We Come. Uh, it's pr might be my favourite. It's my favourite, certainly. Yeah. And uh, that's from that album. I started Queen is something Dead I is a lot of people's favourite, but I don't like the wacky ones. It's on the novelty ones. It's the it's ones. got some great ones. I think he's got his, some of his best tunes on there, but I don't know the frankly Mr. Shank. Yeah, he's always got this, this tendency to sort of write music hall style songs. The yeah, yeah, yeah but that's, that's a great one, that. Um, so there you go. Alvis, John Merrick, Peter Kay, bloke with one arm, woman who sailed around the world, Kim Marsh. What I like about those two, number, num numbers four and five, he ha doesn't even know their names. Yeah. I'm hoping he'll just write on the invitation, <laughs> dear bloke with one arm. <laughs> yeah. Having <laughs> <Probably didn't> a dinner party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's better than most people. I imagine most people when they do it, if they go, uh, Nelson Mandela. I know, of course, and yeah. I, I, I think I read an interview with Mick Hucknall where it was something like, who, who do you admire? Nelson Mandela. Brilliant. I was re I don't read papers when I'm in this country. When I was, uh, on holiday, I read one, and there was an article in there about Beckham meeting him, and the article was about how many people have met him, and I was thinking, we are the only three people that haven't met him. <laughs> Nelson Mandela, yeah. It, it's just like, uh, does he rent himself out? Do you know well, what I mean? It's like the back of the, you know, in the back of the stage when you can get a Caprice look-alike to yeah. wander around. They go, is that a look-alike? No, that's really him. <laughs> yeah, 40 yeah. quid, he'll come to your party. <laughs> I think what it is is that he was locked up for so long. Yeah, he's, he's now he's just at home. He's just so shy. He's, he's just... like Salman Rushdie, he's running around. I've seen yeah. him twice. Yeah. He's, uh, his <laughs> house must be a tip. He's never yeah. in. God. Well, I think it is. If you if you if you stay indoors for a long time, yeah, you've got to get out of there. You've got to get, you out get out a bit stir crazy, I suppose. But he has met, he's met um, some of the great names in world <laughs> events. Also, he's met the Spice Girls, <laughs> Alan Titchmarsh. <laughs> he's met him. Yeah, they did his garden, didn't they? Yeah, David yeah. Beckham. Yeah. Oh, that must have been great. But I mean, maybe we could hold out and never meet him. Yeah, that's this is like even if we get invited, one of them asked me, I go, no, yeah, not really. One no. of the we're the, we're the only three people who've never met yeah. Nelson Mandela. I'm not meeting him, so I make sure he's definitely going straight. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? I don't don't well, really. 
don't like to hang out with people who don't No, well, I wouldn't invite him to my ultimate dinner party in case, you know, the silverware went missing. Oh! Well, you don't know, he was inside for a long time. You know, they pick up things in, the, in these places. <laughs> you can pick stuff up. It's usually Carl that comes out with those sort of things. Carl, what do you think of that? What, Nelson not having him around because he's necking? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's back out now. Let's back out now while we're ahead. Be good right. in, uh, Celebrity Big Brother. Yeah. Being used to being locked up and that. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't, yeah. <gasps> yeah. I started something. I couldn't finish. Yeah. Let's- Absolutely. Should we play another record or should we talk about some- uh, Um, on a lighter note, Muffy the Hamster <laughs> had a narrow escape <laughs> with a- <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Play a song, let's have a rock oh, oh, God. Martina Topley Bird, Need One. Alright, XFM 104.9. Well, it's that time. It's getting exciting, we've got Rockbusters results, but before that- Little bit of monkey news with, oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> Carl Pilkerton, brilliant. Nice to have. I haven't read that for a couple of weeks. Go on then. All right. So, uh, is that this little monkey? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, it lives in Morocco. Right. You, I'll just warn you now. You, you're on thin ice from last time. Okay. So make sure. Is this real? It's been Don't say anything stupid. Think about it. As you're saying it, think to yourself, oh, is that true? Do monkeys do that? Do they think like that? So, go on then. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so there's this ma magician in Morocco, right? Mm -hmm. He's got a little monkey work working with him, mm -hmm. right? Um, the way it used to work, uh, magician used to do his thing on stage, do mm -hmm. a little bit of magic, people loved it. Yeah. Then the monkey came out, had a little cap, walked around the crowd and stuff, uh, got the money, had a good little team thing going on, right? Yeah. So anyway, the monkey's name was 86. Right. Because back then there was so mi many monkeys, it was like, oh, what names, do you know what I mean, what names yeah, do you use, what do you yeah. do? So yeah. they just like, named yeah. it, yeah. right? So this, this little monkey- What, well, he had, he had 86 mon- other monkeys? No, 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 it's just that because a lot of monkeys were sort of working back then, helping magicians out, you know, doing bits and pieces, busking, what have you. Just well, Rick, you know how there's so well, many- why would there be a confusion with that? I I if he only had one monkey, where's the confusion? People would go, oh, I'm not gonna go and see that, I wanna see 86, he's the better monkey. Do you know what I mean? What does it matter? I don't what, know what you mean. Well, why do they need- wh wh who, wh where was the confusion? With people going to the circus and going, what monkey are you gonna go see tonight? I don't know. It's, uh, it wasn't a billing, was it, with a monkey? But Rick, you, it's just the same with humans. You know, there's so many humans now that we can't give them names anymore. Yeah, they exactly. Have have numbers. Exactly, yeah. There's so many humans, you know, with five billion people. Like, we can't give them names. It's yeah. impossible. But, you know, with a few monkeys anyway, working- Anyway, number 22, go on. So, anyway. So, uh, there he is. 86. 86. Uh -huh. With his hat. With his hat, walking around, getting the money. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the magician, sort of, uh, you know, thinking about moving on. Because in Morocco, he'd sort of done all the tourist traps. Sure. So he had a word with the monkey, he said, how about we, uh... <laughs> See? <laughs> no, let him continue. Think. He let, let him continue. He didn't have a word with the monkey. Let him continue. So what do you think about going over to Spain? Yes. <laughs> God. Sure. So, uh, the monkey was in agreement? So he said, oh, go on then. Right, so, uh, so they get in the car, <laughs> and, uh, like the magician knew he'd have a bit of a problem on his hands because you're not meant to take monkeys out of the country. Yeah. Right? So he thought, right, what I'll do, I'll, uh, I'll get a car, right? Right. Uh, stick the monkey in a boot, right? Uh, get on the boat and hopefully sort of, you know, stick it in, a, in some luggage and what have you. Yeah. We'll be over there, we'll be earning big money, sure. everything's gonna be great. So the monkey was like, brilliant. So they, they get in the car, they're on the way to the, uh, to the boat. And, uh, pull over at a petrol station. Uh -huh. And, uh, just before filling it up, he opens up the boot and he goes, yeah, alright, and then it's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so he leaves, he, he leaves the boot open so he can breathe and get a bit of fresh air whilst uh -huh. he's filling up. Goes in to pay the money. Yep. Pays the money, he goes, uh, I'm just paying for the- Right, uh, it, this monkey is not gonna drive away in that car. <laughs> or, we're never doing this feature again. <laughs> Carl, what happens? What's, um, what's number 86 up to? So, <laughs> 86. So, uh... That's the ending, isn't it? That's the story. Come on, let- let Carl right, finish the story. Not be, it brilliant, not be. brilliant, brilliant. You're gonna love it. Right, so he's in the petrol station, and he's going, right, I'll pay for, uh, Pump 4. And the fella says, what are you talking P about? Pump, pump four? 4, isn't that a monkey? No. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I use numbers for monkeys, sometimes <laughs> yeah. I use- no, I mean Pump 4. Sure. Yeah, so he says, on. what are you talking about? There's no car at Pump 4. Right. <laughs> Keep going. You. Sticks his head out of the door, yeah. the monkey's given it some, uh, went over to Spain on its own. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, well, hang on, let's just, let's just get a couple of the facts right here. Right, right. What do you mean, couple of the facts, right? There are no facts! So, it number 86. It, it, 
Number, Number eighty six. He drove to Spain. You are t- uh, honestly, Carl. I t- you must know. It was an automatic. Right. How Carl, did he? How you did must he... know that is shit. There is no way a monkey. Mad, dr- that's the thing with his feet. He gets stopped at customs. It's mental. How would he get through customs, Carl? Carl he got a passport. No, 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 he was sneaking about because he didn't have a passport. So he parked and then snuck through. Do you want the facts? Let me see it. Right, I'll examine this, Rick, and we'll play a record. Play a record, uh, record because I can't- facts, that's, yeah. that's- that's nearly as bad as the armed robbery. Right, go on. Yeah. Play a record. We better suede? Yeah. Stay yeah. together. My favourite. One of 86's favourites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. My favourite suede track. No, stay together. XFM. Well, nearly time to go. But, uh, before we do, a little bit of rock buster results. Just checking some of the answers, Rick, and it seems that an awful lot of people have got it right. Go on then. Tell us them again then. Remind us of them before you give us the answers. Alright, Rock Busters number one was like this. It was a customer. We're stopping monkey news, by the way. Until you start getting some credible ones. Because it. Because that's ridi- it's ridiculous. Mm. It's not true. No, it seems, seems mad. But no, it's but it's, it's from the internet again. So anyone, anyone can go online, download that story. It's insubstantial. It, 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 it's. Get ones, get ones from journals or where the, the source is quoted. Okay, mm. or, or yeah, we're not that's, interested, that's what I do. That's or what we're I do. not. We're not. Well, you don't. Mm. Okay, so that's same with so, uh, on thin ice. We've we've pulled this once. We've pulled rock, but we suspended it once, mm. and you came back again. So it's. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So go on then. Right. So rockbusters. Uh, rockbusters number one was about a customer who wanted some paint. Wanted to darken up a room. The shop assistant knew what to do. What did she do? The initials were CB. Seller Black, right? Seller Black. Seller some you black. You see, paint. I thought Silla Black because it's CB, and I thought, well, it can't be because it's not seller. It's not sell her black. Cryptic, it's Cilla- cryptic, though, isn't it? No, no, cryptic doesn't mean it's wrong. Uh, they all <laughs> got it. They all got it anyway. So it's a bit weird, isn't it? Uh, second one. It would be all right if the reds weren't that big, right? Right. The initials uh, are SF. Well, well uh, one of my favourite bands, yeah. Yeah. The the smaller faces, isn't yeah. it? Small that, faces. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. Okay, go on then. Uh, and the final one, uh, Chanel have got another perfume out. Right. I'll just say, we've had an email from one of our uh, listeners who said, if this turns out to be new order, he's never listening to XFM again. What's, what's, the, what's the, the clue again? Chanel. I've, I've got another perfume out. N- new odour. Right, well that's another listener gone. What do you mean? There's not a group called New Odour. No, it's, it's cryptic. It it's not- cryptic. that doesn't mean cryptic! Wrong doesn't mean cryptic! It's like saying what animal I'm thinking of. Frog. It- 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 that doesn't mean cryptic. Sell her black. What artist is that? Small faces works. Just about. If I say what animal I'm thinking of, what, what am I Monkey. thinking? Monkey. Well, there you go then. <laughs> so, so it does work. Play a record. Right? Play a record. So, who's a winner? Ah, yes. Now, I'm gonna give it to, um, uh, someone who emailed in with the correct answer. <laughs> and he, his name is Steve Martin. <laughs> really? And I'm giving it to, I don't know if you've noticed over the last few weeks, I've been given the prize to people with just a kooky element to them, you know, if they've well, got people a, to start an name. sending their name in, like, um, uh, Barry Bumpfroyd. Well, don't worry, because I can spot if it's a, if it's a fake comedy name. Or what was that it, last one we laughed at? For I can't no remember. I think it was Gerald something. Yeah, it was. It was just like Gerald Smethurst no, or something. It, what's it, uh, Preston? Gerald Preston. Gerald Preston. Gerald Why is that a funny name? Gerald. Jerry Preston, a great guy, but Gerald reason, Preston, we laughed at that. He caught right. my attention. So this week, Steve Martin's caught my attention. <laughs> right. Yeah. When was the last time Steve Martin made you laugh? This Steve Martin? Or <laughs> 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 um, Dickers has not uh, been- Yeah, mis- we've had no correspondence from, from Dickie Anderson for some time, which uh, saddens me. Little Dickmeister General, what is he doing yeah, out there? Has he got- uh, what, he's got like, he's got something better to do? Mm. Mm. Ridiculous. Yeah. Pathetic, isn't right. It? Well, that's, so that's the end, dude. We've got the last song, so is there anything? It's the, end, it's the end of Rockbusters, and it's the end of Monkey News. Monkey News will give you one more go for it, and it's got to be credible. It's got to be real. It's got to be true. We need to see your sources. It needs to be yeah. corroborated. Okay. Rockbusters, they've got to be real band names. New Odor. <laughs> <laughs> New Odor. <laughs> New Odor. <laughs> Just anything. Just. <laughs> 
Brilliant. Um, well done to Steve, he got them all. So. <coughs> so is that it then? Yeah. Brilliant. Well, uh, Cheers. I've enjoyed that. Hope your back's better, Rick. Yeah. And, uh, Carl, I hope you, um, buck up your ideas. <laughs> your brain's better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got something interesting about a brain we'll can talk about it next no, week. No, tell it now. No, I'll- I'll- Quickly, what is it? No, I'll I'll leave it. Oh, well, that's a hook. Like, people will be going for a week. Oh, I wonder what things were Carl's brain. Was it a brain that drove a motorbike? (laughs) Across to Switzerland? You've heard it. (laughs) 